Good day, this is Dr. Naveen Alexander and welcome to Rao Online. Today we will be talking about disaster surgery, a topic that did not have much importance a little earlier in the decade. But as we are seeing more and more natural as well as man-made disasters, this is a topic that has come to the forefront on how to manage a situation which requires you to have some amount of knowledge in this. So, we are discussing today about both man-made as well as natural disasters. As you can see, you can have a major RTA over here, you can have a bomb blast, which this is the famous um, attack on the Taj Mahal Hotel in Bombay. This is um, where you have a major building collapse, you could have had a tornado or a flooding that can cause severe problems. So, what is this? Any disaster resulting in a number of victims large enough to disrupt the normal course of an emergency system is known as a mass casualty incidence. And to further classify this is three terms that we use. We use multiple casualty incidents, mass casualty incidents and major medical disaster. So, multiple casualty incidents is when the casualty strain is beyond the normal daily operation. If your casualty is handling around 40 to 50 patients a day, suddenly it steps up to around 150 to 200. That is a multiple casualty incident. But it can still be handled by the local hospital. When it is a mass casualty, it involves hundreds of casualties to a single institute, definitely more than the capacity of that emergency department. And a major medical disaster is when it's more than it numbers into the thousands and definitely external support is required. So the disasters that can contribute to all of these can be natural as well as man-made. Man-made is a little more common especially because of major road traffic accidents. So you can have RTAs, you can have shootings and bombings and terrorist attacks and definitely biowarfare is going to be a part of the future regarding this. Naturally, we can also have earthquakes, flooding, tsunamis, tornadoes, as well as uh, inadvertent nuclear plant fallouts. So, mass casualty. What is mass casualty? When you have a group as small as five to six to even hundreds affecting the local hospitals where the number of patients is greater than the hospital resources. So, what are the factors that influence rescue and relief efforts? So, the status of communications. Now, we are in an era where communication is phenomenal. You are able to just pick up a handle device and call up someone and inform that th such and such a situation has occurred. But a few years ago, let's say around 15 to 20 years ago, we did not have cell phones so rampant and communication was not that easy. So, that is one concern which has changed for the better now. Location, whether rural or urban, definitely because an urban situation is you have better healthcare systems in place to handle a situation which might require more than the uh, existence of one emergency department handling all this. The location does matter. And when it comes to rural, what is the accessibility? Now, if you are looking at something that is just a plain village as compared to a hilltop village, accessibility will play a major role. So, whether you require just ambulances or do you need medevac helicopters, all this does matter. So, accessibility plays a major role in influencing the rescue and relief efforts. What is the time frame in which disaster occurs? As you may very well know, hospitals are generally less staffed during the night time as compared to the day. So, if there is a mass casualty that occurs at night, Systems in place will allow you to include much more uh, healthcare professionals into the management of that disaster, but it will take some slowing down uh, because of the non availability of majority of the people. So, definitely, if the disaster occurs during the daytime, it is almost always better handled as compared to the nighttime. And naturally, you would think that the economic state of the area does play a role in the relief efforts. Now, when it comes to a mass casualty um, incident, these are the things that we, how everything is framed. So, you have what is known as a chief of operations. Now, usually this is the person who is at the administrative or the operative head of the local hospital. 
under him is the medical services and below the medical services we have the management leaders you have the triage leaders you have the evacuation team and a communications team so management leader decides on how the patient needs to be taken care of this is all based on what the triage teams do they will also contribute to this evacuation these evacuation and communications naturally does not fall under the purview of the hospital per se it goes to the local health authority and they will take care of the evacuation and the communication so how as a hospital can you be ready for a disaster it is very important that all major hospitals have regular mass casualty drills with established guidelines for treatment and procedures so major hospitals do this on a fairly regular basis they do conduct mass casualty drills where they practice a situation either a code brown which might be a natural disaster or a code black which might be a bombing and then they see how fast and effective their drills are in setting up the triage system and the evacuation systems so the management in any mass casualty the key objective is to establish a good triage system which will minimize the mortality and the morbidity so triage comes from french trier meaning to start sort out okay and basically what it means is it's to group patients based on the severity of their injuries and the likelihood of their survival this is what is known as triage so triage has been around from the time of the napoleonic wars this is dominique gelaret who was a surgeon in the french army under napoleon and he started the entire triage system of classifying patients on based on their wounds and deciding on what to do for these patients and he is forever immortalized at the arc de triomphe in paris now any good hospital has these these are basically the tags and the data sheets for each of these triage systems now the tags are on your left of your screen and the data sheets are on the right mostly what i want you to concentrate your um, view on this is the colors on this so you have a lot of color coding so zero which is black over here naturally means that the patient is dead nothing else can be done red is the level 1 where the you can see it being delineated by a uh, hair okay that means fast and urgent care is required 